Hey everyone, Joe here, and recently we received several requests for a tutorial on how to pair and set up the video doorbell and video doorbell monitor. We'd like to show you how to do that today, but first let's talk about what you'll need to get started. You're going to need the video doorbell itself, as well as the video doorbell monitor, and you're also going to need a PC. In order for those devices to communicate with each other, you're going to need a local network. And in order to power the video doorbell and video doorbell monitor, you're either going to need a pair of PoE injectors, or preferably a PoE switch, which is what we'll be using in the video today. That's everything we need, so why don't we go ahead and take a crack at it. So firstly, both the doorbell and the monitor come with one of these PoE attachment cables as you can see here. And as you can see, that's already attached on the video doorbell, so we're just gonna go ahead and attach this one right now to the monitor. Next, we need to power these devices by running an Ethernet cable from your PoE switch and connecting that to the port that we just added to the, both the video doorbell and to the monitor. So the first thing we want to do is turn our attention to the video doorbell monitor. We have ours on a tablet stand that we are using for the convenience of filming, but obviously nothing like this is going to come with the unit. So there's three fields that you can see on the screen. One is a password field, one is a confirmed password field, and the third is an email. Simply enter in any password of your choosing two times to set up a new password for the unit and then enter your email address. When you're completely finished, tap OK. The next thing that we need to do is ensure that the IP address information is valid and we set this with a static IP so that it won't change on us. You'll notice that there's a settings option right here. If you tap the settings option, you'll be prompted for a password input, but be warned that we actually need to access a different menu. The way that we're gonna do that is we're going to long press the settings button, and you can see I'm pressing it for a good five to 10 seconds, and after you do that long enough, a different password field will open. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to put in your password and this will take us to the next page. Once we're on the next page, we're gonna to want to be into the network menu and make sure that we are on the wired if we're going wired, and WLAN if you're gonna be setting this up for wireless. We are setting up for wired, and we can see that the IP address that has been assigned by the network is actually one that works well for our network. And since all these settings are good, we're making sure that DHCP is off and simply tapping OK. When we're done here, we're gonna to need to turn our attention to our computer and download a tool. So let's go do that next. Once you have your computer on and opened, we'll need to download the Elite Configuration Tool specifically for VDB, which is the Video Doorbell and Video Doorbell Monitor. You can find this program on our website at securitycameraking.com underneath CCTV Learning Center in the Download section. Once you have the program downloaded, extract it, and if you like, place a shortcut to the application on your desktop like you see in the video. Once you have the program downloaded and installed, go ahead and open it. You shall see that it automatically searches and populates with the uninitialized version of the video doorbell. We're going to check it and hit initialize. Check the box and hit initialize again. You'll have to input a new password two times and it has to be a minimum of eight characters. Make sure to put in a recovery email as well and then hit initialize. Hit OK and watch the process complete. It may indicate that the process has failed, but you'll see in a second that in fact it hasn't. As you can see, the device has successfully initialized. You'll want to pay attention to the IP address and make sure that it is in scheme with your network. If it's not, you're going to have to click the pencil icon and create a new static IP address in line with your network. Ours was in fact in scheme, so we're not making any changes. Next, we're going to be opening the web GUI of this video doorbell. Click the Internet Explorer icon Maximize the window and enter in your username and password. The next screen that we're going to be looking for is called Indoor Manager. Once we get to that page, you're going to want to make sure if there are any entries present that you delete anything that you see. We don't want to have anything left over. We've already gone ahead and deleted the entry, so ours is blank. Once it's blank, you're going to then go ahead and click the Add button to create a new entry. For this, you can put the name, nickname, and first name for the VTH doorbell monitor as anything that you like. We're just gonna use VTH here. What's important though, is when you get down to the VTH start number. 
This is going to be the same by default for any VTH unless you've changed it, and it is 9901. Lastly, you're going to want to input the IP address for your specific VTH doorbell monitor. Once you've done that, click OK and direct your attention back to the doorbell monitor itself. Now that we've finished inputting info into the video doorbell via the PC, we've come back to the actual monitor itself and we've used the long press settings menu to get back to the main primary settings. The first thing we'll need to do here is go to search device. Once we do that, you can see that the information for the video doorbell is now found and we're going to click the add button here at the bottom. What this will do is populate a screen with any of the information from the video doorbell. And the one thing we're going to want to do is double check this information to make sure it's correct, which it is. And then we're going to go and make sure that our password is accurate as well. Once I hit that password in there, we're going to click OK. So once we're done inputting that information and adding the device, you'll notice that the add button is now grayed out since we have done that already. And we're going to go to VTO config. From here, you'll see the enable status is on. Uh, that does mean that it should be connected, but what we like to do is just double check that they are synced properly. So real quick, we're going to set that to off and set it to on again one more time. Once that's done, we're going to hit the home button right here and we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to first test if we can actually see through the camera using the monitor button. So we're going to click monitor and then click main VTO. Awesome, we got everything working today. Thanks for joining us as we showed you how to set up the video doorbell and video monitor. If you have any more questions about these products, where to purchase them, compatibility questions, don't hesitate to give one of our sales pros a call at 866-573-8878. Till next time, stay safe.